Hi everyone. Um, this video is in response to a user in the uh, Shapeways 3D Design user forum uh, who was interested in translating the techniques I used in modeling the floral star ball from my 3ds Max tutorial into Blender. Um, if you haven't seen or would like to see my 3ds Max tutorial, I'll provide a link to that in the video description below. Um, the process of creating this object in Blender is very similar to uh, 3ds Max with the exception of some of the tool behaviors and uh, some minor workflow flow differences, obviously. Um, the first thing you'll want to do is make sure that you have the math function uh, mesh add-on enabled. Um, I believe it's part of the add mesh extra objects script. So if you have your extra objects enabled, it's a good chance that it's there. Um, I'm also using the uh, Pi menus and dynamic spacebar add-ons, uh, but those are completely optional for the tutorial. All right, so <clears throat> let's get started. Um, we'll add, uh, let's say, we'll add our math function solid. All right, and when you first initiate this, um, what will appear in your uh, in your viewport will be a tetrahedron. You'll want to just go down here to uh, your source option in the tool panel and change it to dodecahedron. All right, so it'll look like this. And unless you're showing uh, your wires, um, it will appear as though the object is made of all n gons. Uh, however, once you tab into your edit mode, you'll see that there are some internal edges crossing each one of the n gons. So um, first thing we're going to need to do is switch to ed edge mode, select one of those, and uh, we'll select similar to grab them all. I used uh, by length. All right, and then we'll delete those by uh, dissolving them. Okay, so now we do in fact have uh, a dodecahedron of all n gons, and that'll be a good starting point. All right, and the next step is to select all the remaining edges and just subdivide uh, and change the type to intervert and it'll appear as though nothing happened but in fact what you've done is created some internal vertices along these edges that we'll utilize in the process okay so the next step is to switch to face mode and um, we're going to do an inset and uh, over in the tool panel here, I'll just enable my individual inset, and we'll give it uh, we'll give it a thickness of 0 0.5, and that should bring up bring it down to almost nothing, um, depending on your scene scale. As you can see here, what we're doing is we're insetting all the way down until you have uh, almost uh, you know it's almost closed out completely. Okay. And there's still a face in there, so what you want to do is then go to your specials and uh, remove doubles and then adjust the uh, merge distance until you see all of those internal faces actually collapse. Okay, and then you'll be left with this. Okay, and the next step now, um, we need to work with um, all of the edges here that are emanating from the sides of each pentagon. So we want to eliminate um, the edges that are emanating to the points of the uh, of the pentagon. So what we'll do is we'll select all of those edges that are in fact uh, radiating to the points of the of the uh, pentagon. All right, and we'll do a select similar again to capture all of them and. With select similar, depending on your threshold uh, value, you know it, it, it may or may not catch all of the edges you intended to. So do a quick scan around and make sure they're all they're all uh, selected. Okay, and it appears as though we're in good shape here. All right, so then we'll just uh, dissolve those edges as well. So now we're left with this shape. Okay, and these are the edges we'll need to work with. All right, so the next step will be to uh, go ahead and select all of these edges. All right, and uh, we'll need to select all the way around. 
so I'm just going by length here and it's uh, capturing all of the edges all right so we have all those edges selected and we're going to do us we're going to subdivide again um, but this time we're going to subdivide with three cuts and we're going to use the straight cut type all right because we don't want any internal edges just uh, just these uh, you know uh, uh, spiraling pentagons here okay so on each face so this is what you should have now looks like it worked on all of these sides correctly all right so <clears throat> now at this point um, we're going to start rotating these so we need to switch our uh, transform orientation to normal and our pivot points to individual origins and then grab the outermost pentagon and uh, select all of them all around okay and um, then we're going to rotate so hit the R key and then the Z key twice all right and you could start a rotation but I prefer to just type it in um, the first rotation will be by 20 degrees okay and then select the uh, second pentagon in okay make sure it's got them all here and then we'll do R Z Z and this time we'll type in uh, 45 degrees okay and then finally the last uh, pentagon here okay and um, again R Z Z and I'll type in a value of 90 okay so now that we have all these rotated um, the next step is we're going to grab one of the uh, spiraling arms here inside the first pentagon and we're going to ring that selection and then loop it and then from there we can grab all of them I believe just by uh, select similar okay so now we've got all of those uh, spiraling edges on each pentagonal face all right and um, from there we're going to bevel and um, we're going to change the uh, amount type to percent and uh, let's see uh, an amount of uh, 40 when you're going by percent uh, is, is probably a good starting point or a good ending point until you have something that looks like this okay so bevel type percent and I'm using 40 here okay and um, from here we'll switch to faces and we'll make sure all of these uh, the star shapes are selected and then we'll invert that selection and go ahead and remove all those faces all right so now we have this all right so now let's select one of the pentagons in the middle and uh, we'll select by sides to get them all and then we'll grow that selection twice and smooth vertex once okay and now you have something a little more smooth here in the middle and uh, you can see the shape starting to form here so let's back out to object mode and we'll go to our modifier panel and we'll use our our cast deformer and uh, we'll give it a factor of one to make it into a ball shape or a sphere shape okay and then from there we'll also add a solidify modifier and we'll uh, just give it a thickness maybe to right about there okay this is all you know personal preference but um, you know right about there makes a good thickness I, I think so all right so now we can collapse our modifiers and go back down into the vertex mode or the edit mode I'm sorry and we'll switch to faces and we're going to start selecting these um, these you know inner border faces okay 
just the inner border uh, faces here uh, between each uh, spiraling arm. Okay, and um, we can select by regions and that'll grab them all. Okay, so now we have all of those fit. And just verify even on the inside that you aren't uh, that you don't have any unwanted uh, polygons selected, um, or that'll screw it up. So, all right, now we're going to inset again, and we're this time we're going to remove individual and just do it by region. Okay, and uh, we can at this point we could hop back out to object mode and add our subdivision surface uh, modifier. All right, so and this is the finished object. Uh, enable smooth shading, and um, here it is. So, <clears throat> you know this this is a, a simple object to achieve, but you know uh, you can go back and mix up a couple things, maybe uh, do different rotational degrees and come up with different uh, styles uh, to the object. But uh, that's pretty much how you do it in Blender. And I hope this was helpful to you. And I'll be back soon with another tutorial. Um, so subscribe to the channel if you like it, and I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Bye.